Hello friends, welcome back to another vlog. Mm, I am actually Future Noelle. I recorded an intro, oh, oh, sneak peek about what's going on, oh, 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 it's almost done. Um, <laughs> I realized I'm halfway through the week and I'm editing and I realized that my intro to this video was dumb. It just didn't make any sense. <laughs> so I'm here to say hello friends, how are you guys doing? How is everyone's day? At the beginning of this video, it is, I think, November, maybe 4th or 5th, and we are in the midst of waiting for politics to happen. Upon current Noel, we are in a state of joy. <laughs> so, it, what day is it? Is it the 7th? It is the 7th, it's Saturday, so that tells you something. <sighs> Anyway, I wanted to say hi, how are you guys? I hope everyone is doing well. Um, I thank you all for your comments in my last vlog. That was lovely. I had a lot of beautiful comments from you guys and I, um, I'm so glad that you enjoyed the Halloween houses. Most of you guys seemed really excited about that. So um, they apparently do that Harry Potter house every year. So it is a thing that can be visited. Uh, for people who are in the Bay Area, if you want to have a drive-by or whatever next year, it should be up and about. Anyway, I'm going to hand you off to Pass Noel, who is at the beginning of your vlog experience now. I hope you enjoy this vlog, and I will see you on Saturday, which is when I'm filming right now. Hello friends, welcome back to another vlog. This baby, by hook or by crook, is getting finished this week. That is what is happening. I am ready to have this as a whole beast and be on me. Um, so I'm gonna work my own damnedest to get that done. I have so many things to do this week. It's incredible. I, uh, this is the video that we've all been waiting for, by the way. So I have to do that. I want to finish this. My weeks are also like Wednesday to Wednesday. They're not like regular weeks, by the way. Um, what else? I have, I told you guys that I'm doing a little side gig, so I have to work a bunch of hours on that. I have a bunch of videos that I want to start filming. I have some videos that I need to get editing this week. And I signed up for that Burling Trowbridge class on making an 18th century gown without considering my schedule. <laughs> so there's some cutting and sewing for that gown we're doing involved in that too. <laughs> so I'm, I need to do that. Um, it's looking like it will be a good and informative class and I'm gonna make my gown in miniature, so half size, and they've given us a pattern that's in miniature to do that. So at least my sewing will ha take less time because I won't have to do like full size me size seams. I will, I will do tiny little seams. So <laughs> to that, at least a small reprieve, but yeah, this week's a little bit manic. The first thing I need to do though is get boning into this jacket and that is I think the most time consuming part maybe besides button stuff that needs to get done to finish this up so I'm gonna go ahead and do that I also need to make the collar and get that in so I'm gonna make bone casings right now um, which just involves sewing fabric around boning <laughs> so I'm gonna do that and then start sewing it into the lining just to get things rolling so rather than they were like use your lining material to blah 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 I'm like no I'm gonna use this mock-up material <laughs> so um, I'm gonna find the grain on it and then I'm gonna cut as I'm gonna to pick out these darts and then cut as many of the casings as I can from like basically muslin that I have lying around that I used to make mock-ups waste not want not so I just wanted to mention, um, probably some of you are like, but how did you find your grain line? If you have a plain woven like this, you can stick um, a mechanical pencil and just like lightly drag it and it will follow one thread and make your grain line for you anywhere on your fabric. This is a trick I use all the time. So I finished the Enchantment Emporium, which I told you guys about last time, and I told you I would come back and tell you if it got any less weird. No. No, it did not get any less weird. It is the same amount of weird. So, yeah. Like, cousins marrying each other stuff, like, was like, whatever. They also, like, all sleep around all the time, and I'm like, okay, if it makes you happy, you guys do you. I don't really care about that stuff, but, like, there was all this other stuff that went down that I was just like, uh, what, too? Like, I, I, I physically understand what happened, but I don't necessarily understand all the motivations or, like, how like metaphysically things happened in the book. I don't know. It was kind of a bizarre book. Um, so apparently this writer writes 
other books that are less chaotic. So I might try one of those. I absolutely hated, hated the reader. I felt like she had never read the book before because she was reading it in a very stilted kind of manner, like with no, it didn't roll and it didn't flow. It wasn't a good reader. It reads like they're speaking. And this was like, mm, not a good reading situation. <laughs> and I didn't really like it very much. So that's what happened with that. So I am moving on to the audio adaptation of, adaptation, adaptation, I can use words, of Sandman by Neil Gaiman that I am reading and Morgan's going to start hers so that we can record the podcast for that book because that is our next book. Also, we will have to pick the book after that shortly because I don't know if this will take very long, but it is a full cast audio and I am so curious how they're going to take a graphic novel and make it into an audio book. So we'll see how that goes. Okay, so I'm sewing these casings on so that it can be sewn on. What I will do shortly after, they're a little bit loose, like I leave them with just a little bit of room and that lets me stick my needle in there and grab it so that I can sew it down. Um, I will also twist this so this guy is underneath essentially when I do it. I don't know how you guys do it. In the in the instructions they tell you to just like sew it down to it, like with your machine, but I'm like, N nope, that's not, it's all gonna get hand sewn. I also tuck the top in like I tuck it under before I sew it so that it's all encased essentially. Um, I will also clip these down to about half as much and probably zigzag the edges of these before I do that too. It's more tidy than they would have done it, <laughs> but I want to do it anyway. Okay, I have casings all on. I remember that I don't know how I would possibly zigzag these <laughs> if I have to have a zipper foot on, so that's not going to work out. Um, so I just went ahead and pushed the excess to the back and ironed it down and then I will just set it down and they are in order so this is the front of the garment and this is the the center back so I'm gonna do the center back first and work my way out all right so I've done slightly more than half in that I've done half and the middle one so I have to do this much more tomorrow this took me six hours six hours people there's not even that many stitches on each one of these things i don't know what takes me so long but like honestly i'm sitting here listening to my thing and stitching away and each one of these somehow takes like 40 minutes and i don't know what the deal is like i guess i'm just unbelievable this one is like a little bit closer together so maybe i don't know i don't know what it is about me and boning that makes it take so dang long but it does so I've tried felling them in before, also it takes just as long. I think it's because I'm like pushing into a tight space and I'm like constantly flipping it over and checking that like, especially on these ones that I'm not like pushing the thread to the outside. Like I'm, ugh. anyway, there we are. This is where we're at. <laughs> this is how much we have done. So tomorrow I really probably should do the rest of this. Lissai. My hands and my shoulders hurt though, so we're gonna see how I feel when I wake up. It's not like I don't have a million other things to keep me busy, <laughs> but yeah. See you guys tomorrow. We watched some Peter Pan, although this is the next suggestion, um, and I have been putting boning on while I've been doing that tonight, so there's some boning. And I have two more to go, just these two, so I'm just cranking along with the boning, but then it should be done tonight, which is excellent and will help me move forward and is very much needed. <laughs> okay, it's done. I'm hype. I'm actually hype about a bunch of things right now. This is done. Whew. Now I need to put the collar on, put the sleeve then, and line it with the piping, and then do the buttons and buttonholes, and we are complete. Um, I am kind of nervous about getting it done completely completely this week, but I'm gonna do my dang desk. Also, in the mail came these guys. I ordered these little, um, like, you can make these tiny animal kits. I will link you to this person's, uh, Etsy shop. She is in, let's just say Eastern Europe, I think, and so they do take a while. I ordered these, like, god, maybe like a month ago, 
some ridiculous amount of time ago. Um, and <laughs> they're like, oh yeah, we're gonna sell you this kit. It looks super easy when you just see like, oh, she's gonna send you this kit. But really, honestly, this is all you get in the kit. And you actually need a ton more things that she doesn't really tell you about on the Etsy thing. And so you have to build this based on like, there's a YouTube video, like this bat is an hour long YouTube video about how to do it. And she doesn't even, I mean, she does the entire thing, but it will take you more than an hour to sew it <laughs> because she like speeds through some stuff. So anyway, I like this guy. There's tons of them. There's a little giraffe. I'm going to go back and buy more, I think. <laughs> but these are, it, these take a lot more utensils. Like you need glass beads, you need wool, you need felting things, you need like all kinds of different like glues and stuff like just there's a bunch of stuff you need for this so if you go and look for yeah, these kits don't think that that's all you need also the video was like an hour long like I said and when you are done making this you are ready to work at FAO Schwartz like <laughs> this is actual and like stuffed animal creation this isn't like a cute little craft project this is like whoa serious kind of stuff so choose your level of involvement in this craft project and lastly, it rained, like just now. It actually might be raining right now. I am so excited. I don't think we're gonna get much. I think it's gonna be like 0.2 inches or whatever, but kind of the point of that is that the rain is starting. We may not get super a lot, but it means that the fires are gonna be less likely from now on, which means we can all like take it down a notch on the high alert that we are constantly ready to evacuate with so I can probably like put the cat carriers back up in the like they're they're not in the, I guess they're in the rafters but they're on this like shelf above in the garage that we could get them down quickly we just keep them down when it's the, like go season so I can probably put those back up chill out a little bit so that makes me super happy so yeah I am going to go edit the 20 questions video with Rebecca that's going to come out hopefully tomorrow. Um, it is 1 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I have been doing this task for a very long time. I started at 7, I sewed until 9, I went for a walk with my husband for 45 minutes, I came back and I sewed until, yeah, like 12.45. <laughs> so five hours today to get five more bones in I what's crazy is I just timed the last two like I literally had my phone on a timer and they both took like 20 minutes so I don't know what takes so long I don't know what's going on I've got nothing <laughs> but it's okay because I I got it done and that's what matters it's happened today's the day they called the election so I'm very pleased and relieved sort of. I will be more relieved on January 20th, but I will take my wins where I can get them. And, you know, I firmly believe we're settling for Biden. Like, we could have done better. But Kamala is pretty cool. I'll take her. She's from California, so I'm into that. She is a first for so, so many things that I'm just like, yeah, we could have done better. We're settling for Biden. And, so while I think like I am going to hardcore celebrate this win, I'm also going to not forget that like we've got a lot of work to do. Things were broken before the Cheeto got there. Things are still broken. We're gonna have to do a lot of work to fix that. But <sighs> there is like a tiny bit of light on the edge of the horizon and I can see it and the sun is coming and the darkest of the night is over and that is a relief so there's that I had a bizarre day because there's been that my husband went camping this weekend so I'm also alone so like I want to talk about all this stuff with him but he's not here uh, my board is out of control I have created a oh, I can use my finger to point at things a whole new list a whole new list of um stuff that I have to do like potentially by like Wednesday of this week so fun times I'm gonna go do some of that the first thing I'm gonna do though is the collar I have this mandarin collar here that I've cut off cut off I've cut out the um, inside this is the inner thing I'm gonna cut red for the outside and 
pipe it, hopefully. Hopefully that goes well. So I'm gonna cut the black side and um, sew that together and then I will have a collar and then I have to figure out how to attach that to my jacket and then we'll be one more step closer. Um, this, this list right here is actually like a breakdown list of all the things I have to do left also on this jacket. So I can get tiny serotonin bursts over and over and over again. So <laughs> that's how I'm motivating myself today. Highly recommended. I do actually um, feel significantly more motivated than I have in a long time and I I think it's probably the election. So that's great. <laughs> maybe maybe this will unplug us. Yeah, YouTube has actually been super weird lately, which none of us can understand. There's a like, a, you know, I talk to all my homies all the time about what we do and um, everybody seems to be down on views. My subscriber count is like way slower than normal. Like all sorts of metrics are really down the last two weeks. It's very strange. And I'm wondering if it was the election that like like caused a a slump in watching or whatever. It also just might be that like people need a break <laughs> collectively. <laughs> Getting ready for I don't know what I don't know what it is. It's just it's kinda weird. It's okay. It's a thing that happens with YouTube and that's like one of the things about being a YouTuber that like people don't talk about a lot. It's like there is a large fluctuation in in what happens every month on your channel like I had one month where I had four or five thousand new viewers the next month I had like 1800 and the next month I went back to normal which is somewhere around 900 to a thousand like it's in that range so I don't know like things go up and down always the money you get is up and down your viewers are up and down your subscribers are up and down it's a crazy job like for people who have this as their like actual full-time job it's a lot <laughs> okay I'm just rattling on at the camera right now so I am going to go make this color so I can go cross something off my list this is my my mission in life right now going to do it okay so we have the collar inside that has the piping on it so that when it's turned to the outside The piping will face this way and be on the red side because, by the way, that's a thing you have to pay attention to. Um, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and sew these together now and make sure I did it right. Um, I also put some organza on the inside of this material so that it would stiffen the collar up just a little bit. So one of you guys gave me actually the idea to stitch this on on a on the side that I'm gonna have up when I'm sewing and then to stitch it on pretty close to the line there that I want it to be and then when I stitch it actually together just stitch very close to the inside of this line and that will help guide me where I need to be. So I'm gonna try this method. Ta-da! A collar. Cone piping. There it is. Behold, now I will attach it to the jacket, as is foretold by this piece of paper. Okay, so we have the collar on, and um, I think it looks largely wonderful. Um, there are a few little areas where, like, I, because it's on a curve, and you're trying to sew a straight thing on a curve thing, that I get a little pinch. So there's one right here, and there's a tiny one right here. So I'm going to pick those out, and then try to flatten them out, and get the stitching on. Um, and then I would have preferred the seam be sewn open and not shut. So I'm going to go ahead and pick this right here out also and then re-sew it just so it's open. Okay, I have one success and one failure for you guys. So as you can see, I have successfully attached this collar and it looks delightful and I love the yellow on the inside. I think it looks great. Um, the seam allowance will be put into the lining so that won't be a big deal but as you can see I failed <laughs> because I forgot that I needed to pipe down here too and I was intending on doing that because I was gonna pipe also this right here someone suggested that to me and I was like heck yeah um, but but I I sort of forgot that that's not part of the lining <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm just going to pipe all the way on the lining and then it'll just pop out right No, no, it won't actually, no. Uh, Keanu wants you to know he's here. Hi, Keanu. What's going on, baby? Keanu. Do you have stuff to say? Do you want to talk to your audience? They love you. They think you're beautiful. 
they do. I think you're beautiful too. Okay. But whole time, right? Um, okay, so I am not pulling this off to redo it. It's fine. It's fine how it is. We're going to call this uh, a learning opportunity. <laughs> um, so that's great. I'm going to work on some sleeves, getting them like functionally together now. Also, possibly going to mess those up too, but here we go. Okay, so I have put the cuffs on the sleeves. I have decided this time to leave the cuffs like open on the side so that they're a little... A little more piratey somehow. <laughs> it's all I think of as pirates when that happens. Um, okay, so then I just need to iron out the lining of the sleeve and put the lining on here, flip it inside out, and then I need to put the stay stitching in, and then they will be ready to go in the sleeve hole. That sounds like an insult. Stick it in your sleeve hole. <laughs> yeah. This is my fountain of knowledge about sleeves and linings. Your inclination is to turn these inside out and then figure out which arm they go with. It is the opposite of whatever that is <laughs> because when you turn them inside out, they automatically look like the other arm because they're inside out. Um, you, But when they're in your sleeve, you actually want the print to be face in, not face out. So they actually will look exactly like this inside the sleeve. So the wrong side will be to the wrong side of this. So you basically make your regular sleeves right side out and then you put your sleeve lining inside out because you do actually want it to be inside out when it's on there so that when you stick your face in here what you would see is the inside of the pattern. I hope that makes sense. You have to turn them, you have to just make sure not to turn them right side out because then they will be the opposite sleeve. I can't even tell you how many times I've stuck the wrong sleeve in <laughs> from putting, from flipping them out and then laying them down thinking, oh, they're both right sides out, but they should map. No, it's actually the opposite of what you think. And then when you build these, you essentially shove this correct sleeve, this, this outside into the inside of this and then sew around it and flip it inside out. I have done it. There is black piping on the end of it. The lining is in. Everything is cool. I learned a lesson about which side of the lining to sew the piping to. <laughs> it's not the wrong side, it's actually the right side. Hi. I can do logical things with my brain. Um, but the thing I did do with my logical brain was I pinned it all together and then flipped it inside out and went, wait, nope, that's wrong. And so I managed to stop myself from doing something stupid. <laughs> so. We have one sleeve, so I'm gonna go make the other one, and then I need to baste the lining up here and do some gathering stitches, and then these sleeves can be uh, inserted into this jacket, and life will be 20% better. Okay, this sleeve went in well, beautifully. I'm into it. Um, I tried it on, it looks good. These pleats are there, but they're not too poofy, which I really like. I need to pull out these basting stitches that are right here. But I'm hyped that I have a sleeve on. Um, so I am gonna go stir my pot of soup that I'm making today and come back and put on yet another sleeve. Okay, the second sleeve went in great. It also looks wonderful. It actually kind of in some little ways looks a little bit better than the first seam, except that this got caught sort of going the wrong direction. So see how on this one I caught it going down. I didn't even think about that. So I'm going to pick out this little section and I'm going to make sure that this is caught going the right direction and then go ahead and restitch that and then the sleeves will be on and they were not problematic guys this sleeve pattern that i have going here might just be my sleeve pattern for the rest of my life like i don't care what the silhouette is it's getting these sleeves <laughs> 1860s not doing drop sleeves we're doing these anyway uh so i'm pretty pumped on this that this whole thing worked out who was a girl who has two sleeves that's me um i though don't have a corset on so this is not going to snug up the way it normally would, but there are my sleeves. They're on me. I feel good about them. I like them. They feel tasty, except this stupid run that's on it, but there's runs all over this thing, so whatever. 
<sighs> okay, I think I'm gonna call today good because I think trying to do the lining with the piping is too much for me to handle at 2 o'clock in the morning. So this is where I leave you for this evening. And I will catch you most likely tomorrow with some more sewing. Hello, I um, edited a bunch of this vlog already last night and I'm like, oh god, am I manic? I'm like, I have so much stuff to do like five times in this vlog already. <laughs> Did you guys get that? That I have a lot to do. <laughs> and I ruined today already by having an impromptu like cause to meet up with some buddies. So I'm like, ugh, but also it is what it is. Today's assignment is to put the piping onto the lining and put the lining in the jacket and then maybe to cover the buttons because that would be useful if I had them already covered um, because sewing the buttonholes and putting the buttons on it's gonna take me a while. Putting the lining in sounds easy but um, the the situation I, I might I don't know it has you flip it out inside out through an armhole and I actually might not do that I might just leave the top section open because that doesn't have piping in it and then do ye old technique where you flip it and then like stitch it at the top so we'll see this isn't gonna get washed or anything so I think it would be fine uh, but it would let me have more control over the piping because I'm gonna do each like the bottom section and then check it and then the side section and check it so that I can keep flipping it back and forth and look at it so I'm gonna see how that goes sounds like it's super fast and super easy but I bet you it's gonna take me all dang night <laughs> so I'm gonna um, get started. My husband is out getting us dinner, so at least I don't have to worry about that. But, woo woo. I am getting things crossed off my list, so I'm very, very excited about that. <sighs> so while I'm working on this piping, I thought I would tell you guys about our sponsor, which is, of course, the one we've all been waiting for, Audible. You guys know I've been telling you about Audible and how much I listen to Audible for years and years and years, and I am super excited that they decided to sponsor this video. I'm currently listening to The Sandman, which looks like this, and it is an audio adaptation of The Sandman graphic novels by Neil Gaiman. This one contains, I think, the first three graphic novels. And Morgan and I are actually both listening to it right now as we pretty much exclusively use Audible for the books that we use for our podcast. So I am always an Audible fan. I listen to Audible while I sew. I listen to Audible while I drive. I listen to Audible while I clean my house. I listen to Audible while I do my dishes. I, and I don't watch TV very much, so I'm always listening to it. It is one of the biggest treasures of my life, honestly. It's kept me sane through COVID. It has kept me sane through traffic. When I have to drive to Southern California to visit my family, I listen to audiobooks the entire way home. Man. <laughs> I love me a good audiobook. Also, now Audible has podcasts, which I am super excited about. I listened to one narrated by Michael Caine, which was a six-part series called Heist, and it was all about different heists that would have happened in the past, which was very interesting. And it was really cool because they actually had the people who did the heist on the show to talk about what, what they were doing and what was going through their mind and like why they did it and all that stuff, which was really cool. I really enjoyed that. If you would like to get yourself some Audible, you can visit audible.com slash costuming drama, all one word, or text costuming drama to 500-500. Also, if you would like, you can join with Audible Plus, which is currently $4.95 for the first six months, thanks to their holiday special offer. Audible Plus is really cool because it's a program where you have unlimited access to the Audible Plus catalog, and that contains original podcasts, uh, Audible Originals, audiobooks, there's like a world music section that's pretty cool. So um, it's an amazing thing. I, of course, am in Audible at like the crazy tier because I <laughs> eat through my credits so quickly. Um, I personally get 24 credits a year and I frequently have to re-up my plan before that actually <laughs> the year comes up because I listen to so many audiobooks. I mean, having a podcasts or about books which are usually audiobooks doesn't really hurt that either so I go through a lot but um, it's a really great way to learn about new things I love the audible plus catalog because they have all these like very short audible originals are just like two or three hours it's like a really long podcast but man they have some really cool ones I think I've talked to you guys about a bunch of them I've talked about the dinosaurs books um, there was also the famous feuds book that had a whole bunch of different like famous people who were having feuds in the past. 
Um, I like them largely because there are full-length books and there are also very short books in the Audible Plus catalog and you can download as many of them as you want, have them all times, or you can stream them. Anyway, if it's not evident from two years worth of videos where I'm telling you what audiobook I'm listening to right now, I absolutely adore Audible. I highly recommend it. It's a great Christmas gift. It's a great birthday gift. I've given it to tons of people over the years. I think I even gave Constance Audible for her birthday this year because it's just a gift that keeps on giving. I gave it to my mom for like five years running. It's a fantastic Christmas present. So if you would like to get it for yourself, again, it's audible.com slash costuming drama or text costuming and drama to 500-500. Hope you guys like it and if you'd end up getting Audible, let me know what your first read is. I almost forgot to tell you guys about the Sandman series that I'm listening to. I had no idea how they were possibly going to translate a comic book into an audiobook format. This is awesome. I, I love it. I haven't actually, I've talked to Morgan a little bit, I've told her I love it, but I haven't heard from her how she feels because she started listening to it, but she ran through 10 chapters in one day, so I'm guessing that she really likes it too. Um, they have Neil Gaiman as the narrator, so he's describing a lot of the scenes, and a lot of the stuff you can just pick out from context, like you can hear a diner, or you can hear the person typing and they're speaking in kind of the way you would speak if you were writing at the exact same time, like, <laughs> you know, when you send a text and you're like, I would like to meet you. <laughs> so you can get a lot of context out of that, but it's absolutely amazing. And in fact, in a lot of ways, this is spoilers for our podcast, by the way, I find it easier to understand what's going on in this format than I did in the graphic novel. So I find that really crazy. Anyway, I'm going to get some piping done now and I hope that goes quickly. Okay, so this has piping all over it, although this particularly um, pointy corner down here is now rather rounded because of that. But now it is a jacket insertion time. So I think what I'm going to do is just do the bottom hem, although that's scary because there's that corner. Maybe I'm just going to go for it and just do this whole part and then flip it and see what it looks like before I decide how I'm going to close the top. Uh, that's the way I'm going to do it. Okay, here we go. Okay, it's done. It's piped. As usual, I have extreme concern about whether or not it will fit. <laughs> I always have this concern and it's always fine. So this is what the piping looks like on the front. I don't mind how this looks, so that's great. They meet up just fine. Um... I'm very happy with it so far. God, I hope it fits. <laughs> the lining is cute. I don't mind it at all. It's um, it's a little thin, so you can see the black fabric through it. You guys might not be able to, but I can. But I don't care. I think it's cute. I like the inside of the collar being gold. So far, very pleased with this. So now I'm going to make some buttons. Okay. So you can see I have a bunch of things going on here. So I have these buttons. I need to go to Joanne to get more tomorrow because I actually don't have enough. I have 14, well I have 16 buttons but I only have 14 bucks. So I made a button with it. Well I didn't make a button. I just held it over and see how you can see the light still shining through. Cool. So then I tried it with a piece of organza underneath it because you can't put too thick of a thing on here. Didn't work. I got worried because I did a sharpie on this guy here and it's still real shiny but when I do cover it in both layers it seems to be okay so this is what that looks like so I got rid of the the light reflection so that's pretty cool my other options are to do it in gold or do it in black I'm not sure I'm gonna ask Constance all right we have chosen black and this right here is why I want to avoid the Pee Wee Herman bellhop look, if humanly possible. <laughs> so we're going to go with black. Um, I thought I would show you how these button molds work. They're, I'm pretty sure I've shown this before, but there are a lot of new people here. So you buy these molds and they have a front and a back to them. And you know, they're made by dreads, of course. I cut a little square first so that it the button mold fits like within the the surface of this and then I cut it bigger than this by 
as much as like a quarter of an inch, depending on how thick your fabric is. If your thick, if your fabric is silk, you can have a lot of extra in there because it's more about how much this fills up the inside of the button. And I'll show you what I mean about that in just a second. So it's quite a bit bigger than that. It's because it's going to fit between the back here and the front. So like all that extra fabric is in here. So we'll see what happens. Um, and so I get my little fabric maker and I stick my finger in it because it makes a little dent, um, which you can maybe kind of see, maybe not, it's black fabric. So you can see it there and then you can move this around until it's the little dent is right in the middle. Then you put that little button in there and you push it into the mold so that the button's inside and then all this other fabric gets like pushed in into here and it's held down by the back. But before I push everything in, I actually take fabric tack, fabric tack, this stuff, and put some in there and that just helps ensure some some love. So obviously not historically accurate, but you know, I wouldn't say that it's impossible to consider the fact that they might have stuck glue inside their buttons. I don't know that they didn't. I just know they didn't have Fabri-Tac. So I stick like a pretty generous dollop in there. And then I shove all the fabric in, just sort of like push it down into the hole. So that when you stick this guy on here, and stick the, the back of the button in and then you use this guy one more time to just gently push it in. If you have a lot of fabric that hurts when you do it and if you don't like it's silk, you don't and then you just pop the button out and you have a perfect little button. So that's how it's done. I was digging around in my little drawer and I found an extra pack of these buttons so I don't have to go to the store tomorrow which is fantastic. Um, the reason I want to get these done tonight is so that the glue can dry. That is a imperative. Also, I recommend if you're going to do this, keep your bottle upside down, otherwise this takes way longer. Alrighty, we have 17 buttons made. Which is approximately what I think I need. However, um, it is 2.30 and I am going to have a 20 questions with Carolina at noon. So I think I need to go move into the bed space and like take some melatonin and drug myself to try to get to sleep at like a somewhat decent hour so that I can make sure that I'm awake for that <laughs> because I think I have to get up at 11 or so <sighs> and that is how my life is where I think getting up at 11 a.m. is like Ooh, okay so yeah all right I will see you guys tomorrow where we will make buttonholes and apply buttons I guess I don't know if both of those things are gonna happen tomorrow, so we'll see. Okay, it's big buttonhole day. So I'm using this since this simulates my jacket the best. Although I don't know if it has the organza in there. Anyway, it, I have pinned on some lining also just to make sure I have all the, the right layers in here. And I'm going to make a sample buttonhole. So these are 5 8 inch buttons. They're actually slightly less than 5 8 Like if you put one piece down even like on the line uh, yeah it's five eighths uh, so I make my buttonholes for this three quarters because otherwise you will have a nightmare you cannot make five eighths inch buttons go through five eighths inch buttonholes just trust me the physics of that is a nightmare <laughs> Iron Man had this problem and my poor friend Mia like broke her fingers putting all 36 buttons into buttonholes one day so I'm gonna make these three quarters and so I'm gonna make a sample here um, and I do it in as close to everything as I possibly can and then I'm just gonna take my handy little gauge um, and find the the three quarters mark wherever that is oh it's this one so that one's a hard one to like mimic but I can mark it and mark it and then put a line between it so that's what I'm gonna do and I'm gonna use this fantastic pen it's a chalk pencil and it's got it's like a fine point you guys can't even see that it's like a fine point um, pencil 
like a lead pencil, but it's chalk instead. There, that's probably the best view. Both this and this are in my store. If you ever decide you want one, they're there. You can also go look up what the name of it is and then get out of the store and go um, buy it on your own if you do not want to give me any four cents of profit I earn on affiliate links. So that's totally fine. But just now you know where you can find it in the names and stuff. So I'm going to mark this and then do a couple buttonholes as practice just to make sure that I'm on my game before I ruin my jacket. <laughs> Still don't know if it fits. <laughs> Okay, I've marked two of these guys and I'm gonna go do some buttonholes and see how they work out. My machine has automatic buttonholes, um, but you do have to push the button every time you want to switch to a different, like, you move through the paces of it. So I'm gonna change my foot to a number three and then go ahead and make these buttonholes. Okay, I learned some things about my machine my thread broke right here and what I learned is if your thread breaks you have to essentially go back to here and because this and this are all one movement as you can see this and this are all one movement so if you start it over again like on this well, I think part of the problem is I pushed the button too, so I went all the way around once, and so it wanted to start over. So I have to be careful about that, and really I should do a test where I stop it, <laughs> rethread it, and then keep going. I bet you I could have kept going if I hadn't moved, if I hadn't hit the button. Anyway, this one looks really good, so I'm fairly pleased with these. So I think I'm going to go mark my bodice and wish me luck, everyone. Okay, so here are my rules of thumb. When you mark, you mark from top to bottom because you want this top one aligned the very best it can possibly be aligned. When you sew the buttonholes on, <laughs> you sew from bottom to top because the first buttonholes you might do might get a little wedgy, and if they do, they're at the bottom and no one's looking at them, unlike the one right underneath your neck. When you put the buttons on, you put them from top to bottom. <laughs> so that the first button you put on is the most perfectly placed one and then everything else from that sort of follows so top to bottom bottom to top top to bottom so you, you go back and forth through this thing so that is how i do this that is how i'm going to do this right now okay this guy is totally marked I am going to go sit calmly for a few minutes and be calm <laughs> and then i'm going to come back and i'm going to just power through all of them the key here is to show no fear whatsoever and just get her done and don't agonize it over as any longer than you have to. Like, believe me, I am the matriarch of avoiding putting buttonholes in. I hate doing this part, but the best way I've ever learned how to do it is to just freaking do the thing. Like, get it over with. Just go power through all of it. It's actually weird that the sort of like not the faster you go the less mistakes you make but like just a steady grind on this one is the way to go instead of being all like weird and careful about it, just make the buttonhole <laughs> just make the buttonhole move on make the next buttonhole move on and so that is what I'm gonna do okay they are all in I'm like can you even see them they're not all perfect there's some that are messed up like this one has a little jiggy jiggy in it this one's like bulbous Whatever. It's gonna be fine. So I'm going to go ahead and snip these open in just a minute, but first I'm gonna press them. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can record this for you guys. Um, so I use, to cut the buttonholes, I use three tools. I use a needle, I use a seam ripper, and I use a sharp pair of scissors. So I start at the bottom while you get the feel for your fabric and I always do it towards the outside and the reason for that is that there's also seam allowance past it so if you accidentally push too hard you have to go through like twice as much fabric to rip like a giant hole in it is whereas if you went this way you could just kind of if you went this direction you could just keep like going <laughs> so this has like a natural backstop in it which I appreciate again I always start at like the second to top buttonhole and I just put the pin in, like, into the thing. And this pin helps stop anything weird from happening. 
Then I will take a buttonholer, and a lot of people just rip it with a buttonholer. I don't. I make a, a starter hole, and I try to, like, maybe push some of it. And sometimes that's fine, but you never get quite all the way. So then I come in with my scissors, and I snip to the very end there. And then we have a hole. And that is how I make or open my buttonholes in a very safe way. You can also like snip this way just a little bit, open that guy up. You definitely want it to have a good, sorry I'm knocking the camera around, a good amount of play without snipping any of the buttonhole threads so that a button could go through it. And frequently I will keep a button on hand and I will just go ahead and push it through to make sure it works. And remember this is a three quarter size hole and I still had to like push to get this 5 eighths button in. So I did the right size for sure. And then I will just continue doing all 17 of these. All this stuff in here you can clean out with the scissors if you want to. Honestly, it will kind of clean itself out over time. Like I will I will snip out like these long threads just getting them. But the button and the pressure of moving the button through kind of does a lot of this stuff for you. Some people fray check in here. I don't I don't bother. But I will occasionally like before or after I go somewhere, we'll do that. By the way, the making of buttonholes did in fact make my my fabric run in a couple of places. Like, there's another one way up top, but there's one right here too. So, no more tissue top it up for me. Blah. At the risk of being crude, I have 17 open holes. <laughs> um, so these are ready to go. They almost all of them ran the fabric in some way or another. Fun times, fun times, also on the back side. It is what it is, and we are embracing this project for what it is. So I think it'll be fine. Uh, so now I put on buttons, which just is sort of a tedious process, but I will walk you through that as well. Okay, so here's how I do this. I have shown this here before, but for people who are new, I do buttons one at a time. And I put the first button in, and I do that by measuring mostly. And then what I do is button the first button and then close the coat. And I mean, as you can see, I've got three here, so I'll just continue on this path. I take my chalk pencil and stick it in there and make a little mark. And it's not right up on the edge. Um, I do pull it tight because it will be tight when it's on me. Um, it's not right up on the edge, but it's pretty close. And then I unbutton it and look at the mark, and then I measure the mark to make sure it's the same distance down from this one as these buttonholes are, um, and that it's a half an inch from the edge, and if so, I apply a button. And it's really just me buttoning and unbuttoning this coat all the way down, so I end up unbuttoning and buttoning a lot. So I'm probably not going to do all of this tonight, but I'm going to do some of it. <sighs> Why is that guy lawn mowing right now, like honestly? Um, okay, so there are seven buttons done, and I have to do 17, so there are ten buttons between me and completion of this project. Well, this the dress part of this project. I still need to do the hat. So, I'm going to put on these ten, and then I'm going to try it on and see if this guy fits, because that is the eternal question. I'm coming to you live from my new jacket. woo, -woo. I'm all the way in. I think it looks really good. I have a couple of questions about, like, mostly this situation. Like, why this is happening. But, it is what it is. So, and it's made. Which is more important than perfect. So, this looks what it looks like when I'm just, like, standing around. So, okay. I don't know. Like, part of me wishes this collar was down, because it would just cover that up so nicely and I guess I could wear it down but I made it so that the this is up so like the piping shows both sides this would just show black piping but I guess that's not so bad it's just like you'll see more of the back of the piping because the piping is two threads thick there and only 
one thread and then some space thick here. So mm, I think it's fine. Probably people have this happen all the time then. Um, I need, this is that thing that I'm talking about happening, that crack right there. So I just need it. There's a pad you can make that's like L shape and I need to make one anyway. Just You can stick it in all of them. Just like gently stitch it in essentially each time you wear each one so that that doesn't happen. It happens all the time if you wear corsets on your bodices. So anyway, I'm very pleased with it. I like it a lot. It fits very well. I'm like, is it possible to show you the back of this? Yep. The back looks really good. I'm impressed with it. I like it a lot. Very happy. So tomorrow I think I'm going to put on the whole outfit. Well, the skirt, the overskirt, a petticoat, a bustle, you know, that sort of stuff. But probably not going to do my hair. Just going to go out and show you the whole thing so far. Um, I'm missing a hat at this point, And then other than that, it feels pretty done to me. So I'm hype. I'm super hype. That's exciting. For those of you who get joy out of this. Alright, I need to make a hat for this, but honestly, this hat works. <laughs> so I'm gonna wear this hat for, for just this one shoot and show you the whole dress together. I think that's it. So if you like this video, do give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you next time with another video. Bye guys.